Hello everyone. In this post, we would like to find the moment of inertia of the disc about different axes. The basic difference between a ring and disc is ring is a kind of a one-dimensional body where its entire mass is in the format of the length of the wire, whereas disc is a two-dimensional body where the mass is spread over the entire surface area of the body. Now let us imagine a ring of radius r and mass m. We want to calculate the moment of inertia of this ring. Moment of inertia of body about any basic axis has to be determined basing on the concept of integration that is by calculating the mass of a small particle and the distance of the particle and its square and repeating the same for all the particles and adding all of them that can be mathematically done in the format of a integration. Assume that we have followed that process and we have determined the moment of inertia of a disk about a basic axis. Let the drawn axis a dotted line is if the axis is passing through the center, it can be noticed that the drawn axis is passing through the center and is perpendicular to plane and perpendicular to plane. Moment of inertia of this body I, many times even you can call it like Ig because this axis is passing through center of gravity can be determined basing on a concept of integration as m r square by 2. Taking this value for granted assuming that if you know, we know this value. Now let us consider a scenario the same disc circular disc of mass m and radius r but the axis is not passing through the center passing through the tangent of the disc and of course in the perpendicular plane. Now we are interested in calculating the moment of inertia of this disc about this axis which is tangential to the disc but perpendicular to the plane. Rather than again repeating the procedure of integration we can use a theorem called parallel axis theorem. Just now we said Ig is mr square by 2. It is very clear that the distance between these two axes parallel axis is nothing but the radius of this disc. So we can write simply that using that parallel axis theorem i is equal to ig plus mr square. According to parallel axis theorem, moment of inertia of the body is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of the same body about an axis passing to center of gravity and the product of mass of the body with the square of the distance from the axis between the two axes of rotation. In this case, Ig is nothing but mr square by 2 and another mr square as per the definition. So the moment of inertia is 3 by 2 mr square. Like this, we can calculate the moment of inertia of a given body whenever the axis of rotation changes. Now, assume that we are having some another scenario where the axis is again changed. Let the scenario change like this. The disc is same, mass is same, radius same, but the axis is like this. It is about the diameter. I want to calculate the moment of inertia about this diameter. It is probably clear to understand that even if I draw the diameter like this because of the symmetry and of the body, moment of inertia is going to be the same. So this behaves like an x-axis, this behaves like a y-axis and this is how the z-axis looks like. And we have proved just now, explained just now that this z-axis is nothing but passing to the center and perpendicular to the plane because it is perpendicular to both x and y. So we can say as per the first definition we have made with respect to a disk, moment of inertia about the z-axis is mr square by 2 and we are interested in calculating the moment of inertia about either x-axis or y-axis. 
For this simply we can use a theorem called perpendicular theorem. According to perpendicular theorem of moment of inertia, moment of inertia of any body about a given axis is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of the same body passing to the same point about two perpendicular axes in the plane whereas the z axis is in the perpendicular plane. In the other way ij is nothing but equal to ix plus iy. ij is nothing but mr square by 2. Both ix and iy are nothing but i diameter that implies moment of inertia about a diameter or about an axis passing to the center in the plane can be identified as mr square by 4. Now let us consider another scenario that is key same and we are interested to calculate the moment of inertia about a tangential line in the plane i. Now what we have determined just now about the i diameter for this axis is nothing but behaves like a center of gravity and we have just now calculated that value as mr square by 4. Now the axis that we need to find out is parallel and at a distance r. So again I can use the parallel axis theorem as i equal to i about the diameter and mr square. So the answer will be mr square by 4 and mr square. So the final answer will be equal to 5 by 4 mr square. Thus it is very clear from all this discussion that whenever axis changes moment of inertia also changes. You can understand little bit uh, closely by observing one point closely that uh, I have called uh, this also as uh, this axis also as uh, center of gravity axis and I am even calling this axis is also as the center of gravity axis. Both are center of gravities, both are the axis passing to center of gravities. But probably one point that you might have noticed, observed, understood is the first case the center of gravity axis is perpendicular to the plane whereas in this second case that is in the plane. Whenever axis changes it is obvious that the moment of inertia also changes. Thank you.